program is sponsored in part by the friends and partners of Philip Goodo Ministries and Calvary Christian Center. Welcome to Philip Goodo Ministries. Now here's Pastor Goodo. Well, I'm very happy that you're a part of our broadcast today. And I'm telling you, you want to take notes. You're going to try to fight not from being distracted in any kind of way because I'm going to call this service a graduation service. Something is going to happen in your life if you give ear to hear and act on what I'm going to teach. Your life is never going to be the same again. So let's go into the service and then I'll talk to you right at the end. I left off in Acts the 16th chapter. Acts 16 chapter this morning, and I'm going to pick right back up in Acts 16, and then I'm going to run real fast. I'm giving you 10 reasons why you should pray. How many reasons? 10. 10 reasons why you should pray, why you need to be a pursuer of God's presence. And I realize that some of y'all have never been pushed to recognize that your most valuable asset you have is being able to get into God's presence. That's why the devil came in the Garden of Eden and then deceived Eve, which also, and Adam, and pulled them out of God's presence. Remember, God would come down three during the day, in the evening, and walk with them and fellowship and spend time with them. Come on, y'all. God wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants you to have time in his presence so he can manifest himself on your behalf. This earth is a fallen earth, but now I can change my whole situation, my whole life, by doing what? By learning how to pray and have that intimate time that was lost in the garden. You know what really gets me? And that is, is that in the garden, they had everything they want. So don't tell me. Somebody said, if I just had this, if I had that. See, the enemy is what you got to understand. You got to watch out for the Satan and the work that he does to try to steal, kill, and destroy your future, your destiny, God's plan and purpose for your life. He wants to steal it. And you got, you got to learn that you got to be on your J-O-B all the time. Okay? That's why you got to be reading and you got to listen to the word that is being spoken because you got to be a pursuer of God's presence. Now, I'm going to testify real quickly about my wife, Brenda. And that is, is that when I was pursuing Brenda, Brenda wasn't pursuing me. I was running after her, but she wouldn't run after me. I was the biggest catch in the school. In college, I was the biggest catch, but she, you know, and, but Brenda, she didn't care. So when I would look for Brenda at lunchtime, Brenda wouldn't be nowhere around. So I asked all her holiness girlfriends who all, they were raising holy in this church. I'm asking them, where is Brenda? They said, oh, Brenda, she's different. She's always fine. She got a place that she goes and prays and spend time with God at lunchtime. Well, that's the only time I'm going to get to see the girl. And she ain't thinking about me. She's thinking about him. And so when we did finally, when I changed and recognized something, then God was able to bring us together. And here we are 51 years married now. 51 years married because, because she understood to be a pursuer of God's presence is a big plus. Wrong side. Is a big plus. See, the problem with most Christians, they, they don't pursue God in prayer like they should or his presence to spend that time, know how to pray the word to get the results that you want in your life. Now, we'll spend more time watching television, being on Snapchat and, 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 and TikTok and, and Facebook and Instagram, and, but don't spend that much time in the presence of God, praying. And no time in God's presence is wasted time. He's a healing God. 
He's a delivering God. He's a God that wants to manifest his miracle work and power on your behalf, but he can't do it until you start praying or pursuing to move into his presence. Now look with me, okay? Ten reasons why you should pray. Here we go. Acts 16. I left off here this morning. I'm back, back on him. It says that when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. This is Peter and, and um, Silas, and they're in, they're in, they got thrown into prison. While they're in prison, uh, look what it says. And, uh, and, the, and the, Go back. Go back. I'm sorry. Verse 3. Let me stop. And it says that when they had been laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to what? Keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the what? This is big because you need to underline it because that's the problem with some folks. The devil is not comfortable with you just being in prison. Some of you, because you have festered and allowed yourself to fester or to meditate or to be so angry and unforgiving, you move from the just the prison, the outer prison, into the inner prison. So it's a little bit more trying to get you set free because you got, to, you got to understand you can't be bitter and angry no matter what somebody did to you. Because what they did to you is what's happening to you now is worse than what they, they did to you in the beginning because now you're giving the enemy more opportunity and charge over your life to steal, kill, and destroy. You got to release unforgiveness. You got to release bitterness. You got to let go anger. You got to let go the hurts. Oh, yeah, this is going over real big. Okay, but I ain't scared of y'all. Come on, here we go. They're in the inner prison, and it's bad. And then it says, and, and then they made their feet uh, to fasten with what? Stock. Look what it says. And at midnight. Now, watch this here. Just real quickly, I'm going over a little bit, but at midnight. Because watch this here. They're in prison. They've been beaten and shackled. And now they're thrown into the worst part of the prison. And, at, and then at midnight, instead of crying and whining and talking about what my ex did or what the boss man did or my co-worker did or my next door neighbor or what, whoever it is, instead of talking about them and what they did to them, look what this says. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Can, say this with me. Prayer, Prayer. changes things. Say it louder. Prayer changes, things. prayer changes things. And one of the things that prayer is going to change more so is you. Look what it says. And at midnight, it's at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And then now, not only did they pray, they sung, a, they started praising God. And, it said, and the prisoners heard them. Now, I made this statement because this is big. Because when most people are introduced to this type of worship, and being able to be set free, they think that prayer is like this. <laughs> prayer is saying something. You open your mouth and you say it and you release the power of God through the speaking of his word. Are y'all with me? Not doing this. You got to speak. Shout at your neighbor and tell him you got to speak it out. You got to talk. Prayer, prayer is speaking. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly... And I'm declaring that you are in a position right now that God is going to start doing some suddenly in your life in Jesus' name. Now, I had another person come to me tonight to tell me, uh, uh, tell me that they had a debt. I forgot how much it was, but it was an enormous amount of debt. That they had this debt, and it just seemed like they were, couldn't get their life for They couldn't move. They couldn't get a house. They couldn't get what they wanted. But because... They, they are godly people. They, they start learning how to exercise this word and started dealing with it. Now, 
the debt has supernaturally just disappeared. Now, 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 I tell people, I tell people all the time, when the bank tell you you don't owe nothing, don't argue with them. Don't argue with them. Well, what happened? And then all of a sudden they went on a search trying to make sure, going, trying to call everybody. If they say you don't own nothing, receive it. Raise your hand up and say, thank you, Lord. Finally, after all the time they spent searching, trying to find out to make sure they didn't owe nothing, nobody could find it. The debt just got supernaturally canceled. Get, go away. Get your hand up and say, I'm next. But see, you got to be, you got to understand it's the principle of sowing and being a blessing and a help to somebody else who's in debt. Now they're in ready, getting ready to buy a house. They couldn't buy a house because of the debt. But now the debt's gone, now they're selling them a house. I'm calling some houses into this, this ministry. Own your own property because, because listen to me, but I, you got to get free from the spirits that the enemy has used to hold you hostage and in bondage to something negative things that have happened in your life. This was negative. Come on, y'all. They got beaten. They got tortured. They got shackled. They got thrown into inner prison, but they didn't cry about it. They didn't go around calling everybody. They're getting in on TikTok or they can get on Facebook and start trying to let everybody know what I've been through. Ain't nobody else's business. You just talk to God. I don't know what side should I go to right now. Tonight, tonight, God wants to turn some things around in your life, but you got to understand God is a God of principle. And while they go back, I'm sorry. Come on, Phil. Go back to verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly. Can I just tell you right now? that if you will drop everything that's been negative, what people did to you, and if you will drop that and quit crying about it, and you'll get into your prayer and not, and see, God already knows what you've been through, so you don't need to go over there telling them what you've been through. What you need to do is go in there with your area of thanking him for who he is and worshiping and listen to me, and he can then get involved in whatever it is that you dealt with. He's a father. He's a loving father, and he loves you, and he cares about you. Shout out suddenly. suddenly. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Everything that was in there, there that was holding them hostage, look what it says. And there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons was shaken. And I'm calling everything that's been holding you back Everything that's been holding you hostage, that's been robbing you of your future, your destiny, God's plan and purpose for your life, that it, because of either you, what you have done or what the enemy is doing, it's going to be shaken. There's going to be a great earthquake in your life, and God is going to shake the foundation that, of that thing that's been holding you hostage, and it's got to turn you loose. And then, oh, oh, man. Okay, now I got to go back. Go back to the top of verse 26. Verse top of verse 26. And it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the, of the prison were what? Shaken and, and, and what? Immediately. So there's a suddenly in your life and there's an immediately in your life and immediately all oh, the doors were open and everyone's bands was loose. And I'm declaring off of this prayer series and off you making a greater commitment to go into his presence. We declared Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the morning to be here to be in prayer. Wednesdays and 5 o'clock at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock on Wednesdays or Fridays. At this month, we call this month the month of prayer and fasting. Something is going to happen in your life that has not happened, but because you're starting to go after his 
If y'all would have messed that one up, I was going to go home. Because you're going after his. Listen, man, and going after his president means that everybody not, might not like you. Because the enemy will send people into your life to stop you from going into God's presence. I was probably one that was sent to Brenda to stop her from going into God's presence. But she wouldn't. I appreciate that. Because our whole life has changed because she kept him first and not me. And immediately, look what it said. And this year, 2024, is the year of the? The year of the what? Of the open door. And immediately all the doors. And I'm declaring and decreeing that all the doors that have been shut in your life to hinder your forward progress, to hinder you from growing and going into things of God, all the doors uh, are going to be open and everyone's bands will be loose. Whatever's been holding you is going to be broken off of you. Come on, get it right now. Come on. Come on, get it right now. You watching right now. Get it right now. All right. I'm giving you 10, 10, 10 areas that I want to hit real quickly. And number one, number one is prayer is the birthright of the believer. Prayer is the birthright of the believer. Say it's the birthright of the believer. And you need to understand it is your right to pray to give God the right to intervene. It is your right to pray to give God the right to intervene on your behalf. In James 5, 16, James 5, 16, and look what it says in James 5, 16. It says, therefore confess your sins, your anger, your bitterness, your resentment, your disappointment, whatever it is, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be, what? Healed and the prayer of a what? Of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Say you receive that. And so what the enemy doesn't want you to do is to be able to pray and to release the power of God to cause God's effectiveness to be manifested in your behalf. So I got to understand. Now, let me just say this real quickly. Don't go just telling everybody your business. Everybody don't need to know your business. So when being a pastor, a husband, a father, a businessman, being a leader over several thousand churches, I, I got a lot on me, and the enemy has fought me every way he can to try to get me to get oppressed, depressed, and permanent pressed. But because of my prayer life and my consistency in and stand in his presence, the enemy has not been able to prevail against me and never will be. And I'm saying he's not going to prevail against you in Jesus' name. But there was times I needed help. You hear me? There was times I needed help and I went out and found, I know some other brothers that are spiritual and strong enough and I told them or my spiritual father and went to him to be able to get help because I was really under bondage. The enemy was trying to take me out. Are you with me? But this is me. But then the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And I'm declaring that you're going to start experiencing the power and the effectiveness of your prayer life behind what you're doing. Where there is agreement. Come on. Where there is agreement, there is power. Number two. Prayer gives us access into his power. But number two is prayer helps you to uh, operate in love. Prayer helps you to operate in love. When you're not operating in love, you are not going to see God's manifestation on your behalf. I know that's hard for some people because of what has happened to you or what somebody did to you. But I'm telling you that when you don't operate in love and you don't release Whatever it is that happened to you, if you don't release it, that thing is going to rob you all the days of your life. Prayer. Somebody say prayer. prayer. It helps us to operate in love. Now look with me in Ephesians 5 and verse 1 and 2. 
It helps us to operate in love. Therefore, be imitators of who? God as dear children. Then he says in verse 2, and walk in what? Turn your neighbor and say he's talking to you right now. And he says, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for who? Us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling say, um, aroma or Savior. Okay? So he, he gave himself for us and he said, we got to walk in love. But how many of y'all know, and you watch it, how many of y'all know walking in love ain't no joke? Because your love walk is always being challenged. Look with me in Galatians 6 and 5 real quickly. Galatians 6 and 5. I'm moving, but Galatians 6 and 5, look what it says. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything or, nor uncircumcision. Religion. R religious people, they want to fight over things. And God said, this, don't, let's don't get in tripping about circumcision or uncircumcision. What, uh, what, what avails, uh, what's going to move you forward is learning how, but faith which worketh by love. Now that's a big one for me. It's a big one for me to learn how to walk in love because I, I didn't know people could be so mean to pastors. I didn't realize how bad people could treat a man of God. And I'm a good man of God. I, I am. I am a good one, and, and, and I ain't messed up and manipulated, taking advantage of nobody. I've been living this life. My wife is right there. If I was telling a lie, she'd tell you. But just because I was targeted by the enemy, and you have been targeted yourself. And there's people that are still dragging people around from years ago, what they did to you, and you're not, and you don't want to see them. You're angry. You're embittered towards them. You talk about them sometimes, but it's robbing you of your faith and everything. What did I just say? Yeah. Everything you receive from God, you receive it by faith. everything. You receive it by faith. And so the enemy is attacking your faith when he attacks you in your love walk. That's powerful. That's important. For you to understand that. If you don't understand, the enemy will keep you in bondage. Number three, prayer gives us the freedom to enter into his presence and experience his companionship and his glory. Prayer helps us, gives us the freedom to enter into his presence and have companionship and experience his glory in our life. Look with me in Hebrews 6, um, Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Everything changes when you start making a commitment that this year, what year am I talking about? This that this year you're going to make a commitment that prayer is going to be the, at the forefront of your life because you're going to spend more time, spending more time than you ever have in the past of getting into God's presence. Say amen. amen. When you become, to push yourself into God's presence, you're going to experience God's presence like you've never experienced before. And his presence makes a difference. Mm, mm, mm. Don't all y'all get happy at the same time. And I want, to, I want to read it out the Living Bible. I'll read it out the King James, then I'll read it out the Living Bible. It said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may, what? Obtain. That we may obtain uh, uh, mercy and find grace to help. Come on, to help in a time of need. Get your hand up and say, I receive that right now. <laughs> Give it to me at the Living Bible. The Living Bible, look what it says in the Living Bible. Let us come boldly to the throne of what? Of our gracious God, and there, will, and there he will receive his what? We will receive his what? Mercy, and we will find grace or favor. That word grace means favor. Find favor to help us when we need it most. When you need it the most, the favor of God is be there to open up a door, to move on somebody's behalf, move on somebody on your behalf to, bring, to bless you, to help you. Because you 
a walking in love, you're a pursuer of his presence, and now God's favor starts manifesting on your behalf. And all of a sudden things just start, excuse me, cracking, popping, snapping, and happening. Now, so I put down here, if you could put it on the screen, the answer to whatever it is that you need is waiting in his presence. It, whatever you need is in his presence. I, I wish, I wish that somebody would have pushed me like I'm trying to push you into the presence of God and then get away from those, anyone that the enemy is trying to rob me of. Read it real loud. One, two, three. It's in his presence. So if it's in his presence, everything you need. That's why Paul and Silas understood that it was in God's presence that we need to get into it. We're in a bad situation, but if I can get into his, everything can change. Are you with me? So sometimes, you know, I, I've been misunderstood because I got friends that walked out of my life or I had to walk out their life because they were not going in the same direction I was going and I had to get away from them to get myself together so I could come back and help them. Are you with me? So when you, when you are a pursuer of his presence, people will start tearing and take up your time. They, sometimes they don't even realize what they're doing, but you just got to be focused on what you got to do. Read it again. Thank you for it, Dale. One more point, then I'm going to get another scripture. And that is, in the presence of the Lord, and there is liberty, deliverance, and release. In the now that you've heard the word, now open the door to your heart. Jesus said, that he stands at the door of our heart knocking to come in and to have relationship and fellowship with you. If you want to receive Christ in your life, for your sins forgiven, say this with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. Take the throne of my life and use me as your instrument. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my Lord. If you said that, Heaven is rejoicing with you. We rejoice with you. Welcome to the family. We want you to text New Life to 55444. Text New Life to 55444. I got a book I want to give you information. And if you need prayer in any area, text Need Prayer to 55444. Need Prayer to 55444. We'd love for you to come and be in service with us here at 2667, 2667 Del Paso Boulevard, 2667 Del Paso Boulevard, here in North Sacramento. I'm telling you when you come, your life ain't never gonna be the same again. So listen to me, I'm praying for you, you're praying for me. Let's believe God that this is gonna be a year of the open door like never before. I love you, looking forward to seeing you next time. Remember this, that the word works when you work the word.